I don't know about you, but I, I've been redeemed. Amen. When I think about the goodness of the Lord yes. and all that he have done for yes. me, Amen. when I think about his loving kindness Amen. that he's shown for me over the years, yes. I know that I was bought with a price. Yes. You might not know it, but you was kidnapped. Uh -huh. You might not understand it, but Satan kidnapped you. Yes. But I heard the prophet say, uh, it was in my ear that we were bought with a price. Uh, the price was paid in full. You no longer have to worry about being in debt. Uh, you no longer have to worry about what others may think about you. Why? Because Christ paid the price. Uh, he bought you back by his blood. And he paid it all. There is no longer indebtedness. There was a ransom that was paid for your sins. There was a ransom that was paid for your soul. No longer have Satan had dominion or power over your life. You are a new creature in Christ. You ought to give God the praise this morning. You've been redeemed. You've been redeemed. Even the angels in heaven can't sing this song. But you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. I don't know about you, but I've been redeemed. And if anybody asks you what's the matter with me, tell them I've been redeemed. Hey, if my friends ask you how I've been doing, then tell them I'm doing just fine. All because I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. My Lord. You can tell them the last time I saw him, his hands were up, giving God the praise. Why? Because he's been redeemed by the blood. Somebody say, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to have to go old school on y'all today. I might have to go old school on y'all today. Sometimes we get cute and we, 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 we praise the Lord real cute and we clap cute. Oh, come on, somebody. But I'm here to tell you, when you think about how good God been to you, when you think about he brought you through your trials and tribulation, when you think you wasn't going to make it, uh, when you think everybody else abandoned you and gave up, I'm here to tell you it was the blood that brought you through. It was the redeeming power that brought you through your trials. Somebody had to give God the praise this morning. What a wonderful God we serve. The word redeemed means to buy back, to get back, to recover as paying for a fee, to pay off. The word redeemed means to be convert, to turn in, to set free. Somebody say hallelujah. The word redeemed means paying a ransom. Mean to deliver from sin right. and the penalties of sin. Amen. Oh, it ain't just God deliver you from the sin. Amen. Whatever guilt you got, uh -huh. whatever penalties that you might have accrued Amen. or you might have accumulated, Amen. all that's been under the blood. Amen. I said, all that's been under the blood. You've been covered by the blood. Amen. It don't matter what you did a long time ago or what you did this morning, it's all under the blood. Amen. It's all under the blood. You ought to thank God that you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation. Before the world was created, God put in motion. He knew that man was going to mess up, but God sent his son to straighten it up. Oh, come on, somebody. To be redeemed means to fulfill a promise our pledge Amen. to be redeemed means to make an atonement for yes. or to restore. Yes. To be redeemed is to be made worthwhile. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Some of us won't worth nothing, but when God saved us, it was worth his while. Yes. I said many of us were up to no good, and we could have wind up in a devil's hell. But God said, I'm going to make them worthwhile. I'm going to justify them. I'm going to remove all the penalties of sin. Why? Because they are redeemable. Oh, my Lord. I don't think y'all understand where I'm coming from. Uh, you, go bottle, you go buy a bottle of water. Come on, somebody. And you want the contents of this bottle, which is the water. But even after you didn't drink the water, uh, this bottle still has value. 
Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. I think that it says there's a five cent deposit. A return. Uh, there's a redeemable amount of money. Now, five cents don't mean nothing if you just look at five cents. But if you don't think it's money in manufacturing plastic bottles, you see that guy with that shopping cart with all them bottles on it? That's pushing up the street with that shopping cart? If you don't think there's money in the bottle, you go try to get his cart. You're going to have a fight on your hand. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all, y'all. You, you, you see that guy all out in the street? He had so many bottles, he couldn't even see the traffic going or coming. But when he go cash that money in, come on, somebody. I heard some people can make as much as forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year for turning in bottles. Oh, come on, somebody. When I was a kid, we used to go down to the Buckeye where we pick up blackberries and plums. And, and every now and then, we people would throw bottles on the side of the road and we would go up because back in then, a nickel and a quarter would meant something. Today, people just don't, you know, they don't even, even, even the crackheads don't ask for a, a 50 cent a quarter no more. They say, you got a dollar, you got $5. Yeah, that's right, that's $5. Right. That's they don't even ask for a dollar, 50 cent no more. They ask you, hey, give me some money so I can buy me a whole lunch and some breakfast. <laughs> come on, you tell them, come on, let's go into the store, I buy it. No, no, give me the money. You know what they're going to do. Oh, you tell them I got it, but they ain't going to give it to you to mess up. Oh, come on, somebody. But we've been redeemed. They can be redeemed. All your family can be redeemed by the power of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So today's title message, I've been redeemed. Amen. Look at somebody say, I've been. Amen. Touch him like you mean it. Touch him by the hand and say, I've been amen. redeemed by the blood. Amen. Oh, while well, you're talking about being redeemed, uh, redemption, huh? You might not know it, but the, but the sands and the time hourglass is sinking fast. Oh, look at somebody said the sand in the hourglass is sinking fast. Oh, my Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to go over to Colossians chapter 1 also. But we're going to Ephesians chapter 1 first. You see, Paul wanted the church of Ephesus to know they were spiritually rich uh, in wealth. But uh, you have to remember that we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, somebody. You see, don't, don't forfeit that which God has given you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse 1. If you got to say amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 1. If you can't turn to your Bible, open it. Go to the table of contents. Ain't that no shame in that game? Come on, somebody. You want to find what you're looking for. Don't play no games with your mind. Come on, somebody. Ah, oh, my Lord. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. That we've been redeemed by his blood. Amen. Redeemed by his blood. Justified. God made a deposit on your life. Oh, somebody talk to me. He made a deposit for you and me. Paul wanted the church uh, of Ephesus to know the crown jewel of Turkey to know that we are believers are rich beyond measure. Oh, you're rich beyond measure. Unto good works, unto Christ who created this manship, this workmanship. Uh, his life was put on the line for you and me. Come on, somebody. Uh, there were times when he toiled in this flesh. And he asked the Father, Father, uh, if it's your will, let this cup, let it pass from me, Lord. But you see, he knew that he must endure. Because he looked down on this October the 6th, 2019 day. And he saw that you and I need to be redeemed by the blood. You see, blood of rams and goats was only a type. It was only for a point in time. But when Christ came on the scene, 1,900 years plus ago, come on somebody, over 2,000 years and 19 years ago, he laid down his life for you and for me. Somebody say amen. amen. And ever since then, you've been redeemed by the blood. You've been redeemed by his power. And every opportunity, you ought to thank God for his redeeming power. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, who was he by the will of God? It wasn't the will of man, but by the will of God to the saints. He's preaching and teaching through by letter. Uh, he speaks to Ephesus and to the faithful that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Everybody said, God reward faithfulness. Say it again like you mean it. God rewards, God rewards faithfulness. faithfulness. He says in verse 2, grace be to you 
Not only grace, but peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul tells them, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why, who has blessed us with all spiritual, somebody says spiritual, spiritual. blessing in heavenly places. You got spiritual blessings. Oh, looking around, somebody said, you got spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You're already connected to eternal blessings that God has for you when you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And at that moment of accepting him, you have been redeemed by his blood. And ain't no man or devil in hell can break that yoke, can break that bondage, and you have a right to give God the praise. You have a right to give God the glory because you're connected to the spiritual blessing. Spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. You ought to highlight that verse. Every now and then when things upset you, you go and pick up this scripture and you quote it to yourself. But I'm connected. Not only connected to the vine, but I'm connected because I'm connected to all the spiritual blessing. And whatever God got for me is going to meet me where I need to be met. Oh, my Lord. Verse 4 says, according as he have chosen us. Look at somebody say, you are a choice that God made for you. He said, according to as he have chosen us in him before the what? Before you was a twinkle in your daddy's eye. Before your mama can bring you through the matrix of the womb. Before the world was created, God, who's eternal, saw you coming through the pipeline. Saw you coming with all your shortcomings. Saw you coming with all your needs and desires. Saw all your sins and all your penalties. And even before the foundation of the world was created, God sent forth his son to die for your sin, to redeem you by his blood. I don't know how you could sit here feeling all this power. You mean before anything was made, God already sent his son and paid the price. So when I came out, although I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, the angels wiped my slate clean by the blood of the lamb. What a wonderful God we serve. Blame before him, he says, he says in verse 4, uh, he says, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. So who's blaming who? Come on, somebody. Nobody can put the blame on you. Because we're holy without blame before him in love. Lord, have mercy. Having predestinated. Well, you've been predestinated. He predestined us until the adoption. Yes, he you have been adopted, in case you didn't know it. Right. Adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasures of his will. Yes. Verse 6 says, to the praise, yes. to the praise of the glory of his grace, yes. wherein he had made us acceptable, huh. acceptable in his beloved. In other words, we were not acceptable until he shed his blood. My Lord. Verse 7 says, in whom we have redemption. That's that word I'm looking for. In him we have redemption. Through what? Through the blood for the forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. When sin thought it had power over you, grace was much stronger. When sin thought it can destroy you, yet grace and mercy stepped in. I don't know if y'all getting this or not. Paul wanted the church of Ephesus to know 
And verse 8, when in he had abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, in all understanding. In verse 9, it says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, Amen. according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself. Amen. I love it when he proposed in himself. Huh. That he's going to do what he say he's going to do. Yes. That in the dispensation of time, Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. Everybody said, but in the dispensation of the fullness of time, of time. Huh. he may gather together in one all things in Christ, Amen. both which are in heaven yeah. and which are on the earth, even in him. Just a few more verses here. And whom also we have obtained an inheritance. You might not know it, but you got an inheritance coming. You might not know it, but that inherit inheritance include eternal life. Being purpose. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Stay with me now. That we should be to the praise, that we should breathe. Uh -huh. That we and I, you and me, should be to the praise of his glory. That's right. Who first trust in Christ. Amen. You have to thank God for trusting in him. Yes. When you didn't think you were going to make it across the street, yes. you can thank God for trusting him. Yes. 13 and 14 says, In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation. And whom also after he believed, that you believed, that you were sealed with the Holy Ghost that will promise you. That will promise that you would get it, yes. and now you got it. Yes. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. Yes. I said I've been redeemed. Yes. I didn't understand it all the way, but I know now I've been redeemed by the blood. I've been redeemed, and I've been sealed with the promise. Somebody say, I've been redeemed. Let me somebody say, I've been redeemed. If somebody asks me what's my name, just say, I've been redeemed. If somebody asks you where you're going, just tell them, I've been redeemed. See, that's an old fashioned word. That's a word that goes way, way back. That's a word that go back in, even in the Old Testament time. It's a word that God wanted you and I to be familiar with. That you be redeemed by the blood. Come on, somebody. When them old friends have been looking for you, and you're running to them old friends, you can tell them I've been redeemed. No longer am I in sin. No longer am I in righteousness. No longer am I living a, a life of unrighteousness. That I've been redeemed. After you believed, yes. whether you want to recognize it or not, God sealed you yes. with the Holy Spirit, yes. better known as the Holy Ghost, yes. the Holy Ghost of promise. Yes. It was promise. Yes. Look at somebody say, it was promised to you, and now you got it. Now you can act like you don't want it. You can act like you don't own it. You can act like you don't know about it. But it's been promised to you. And when something's been promised to you, you got to learn how to claim it. You got to recognize where it comes from. And it can come from on high. And it was promised a long time ago. And you and I can have it each and every day and each and every way. And all you got to do is give God the praise and give God the glory. I've been redeemed. Yes, I've been redeemed. I was brought with the price. My, my, my. You see, many people were redeemed. 
didn't realize the power of God. And then verse 14 says, which is the earnest of our inheritance. It is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, redemption of the purchase of possession unto the praise of his glory. When you got saved, God got glorified. When you got delivered, God got glorified. When you got baptized with the Holy Ghost, that fulfilled that which God had already said was going to happen. And long before you realize I'm going to get saved one day, long before you realize what God was going to do, God already had you on his radar. You have to thank God for salvation. He said he was going to save you and your household. You might not know if a great-grandmama, great-great-grandmama were praying for you. And somebody had you in their prayer. And when God heard their prayer, God began to pay close attention. And God began to recognize that I got to see my holy power. I got to see my holy anointing. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You see, I can tell you many people in the scriptures that thought they were just going through the motion. But they didn't know they was in the will of God. They were bought with a price. Uh, they was in the will of God. And all they had to do is just come a little closer and know the Lord for themselves. I don't know about you, but one day I came a little closer. I was like Moses at the burning bush. Somebody called me and I got a little closer. And when I got a little closer, the spirit got a little closer. When I began to confess, the spirit said, that's my child. God said, that's my anointing. Won't you save him with my healing power? Won't you deliver him with my healing power? I ain't the only one that God saved. I ain't the only one that God sanctified. I ain't the only one that God baptized with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. I think the songwriter said, I'm stronger than I ever been. Come on, son. You see, Satan thought he had me bound. But now I know I can win. Says, why well, I'm stronger than I ever been. He might not look like to you on the outside, but God has always been working on the inside. I know the power of God. I know how much I can trust him. Come on, somebody. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. Why? Because I already know too much about him. And I know Satan can come with all kinds of tricks. But I already know I've been predestinated. When you know you've been predestinated and your mind is made up to serve God in the beauty of holiness, ain't nothing can stand in your way. When, when I think about the many men and women in the scriptures, uh -huh. it was the prodigal son that had to be redeemed. Yeah. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. He got a hard head and decided to leave home. Uh -huh. When I think about Lazarus who were redeemed, come on, somebody. Yes. But the rich man missed out on redempting power. Yes. When I think about uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, yes. come on, somebody, found that he was the son of Abraham. Amen were redeemed by the blood. Uh -huh. It was Peter who wasn't sure about this salvation, but he was redeemed by the blood. Amen. It was his counterpart, Paul, who found himself persecuting the church, uh -huh. but the blood redeemed him. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. It was Stephen who cried out and said, I see Jesus at the right-hand side of the Father. It was that redeeming power Amen. that delivered him even though he was stoned to death. My, my, my. It was Cornelius of the Italian band who done wonderful things for the glory of God, but he didn't know that God had him in his redeeming power. Amen. 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 Then I think about uh, Joseph of Apotheus. Come on, somebody. Nicodemus, the religious ruler. You see, Joseph of Apotheus was a rich man. He had all kind of money. 
he had authority because he sit on the Jewish council. Yes. He had insight and knowledge about how things work out. Amen. And there he had a friend by the name of Nicodemus, uh -huh. who was a religious ruler, Amen. who you know came to Jesus by night. Yeah. Many said, why by night? Because he couldn't make it by day. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. God may bring you in the morning, or he may bring you at night. Amen. But you can thank God as long as he brings you, it's all right with me. Amen. Come on, somebody. Some people want to wonder and worry, but you ought to thank God. You don't know when he's going to bring your children. You don't know when he's going to bring your grandchildren. You don't know when he's going to bring your wife. You don't know when he's going to bring your husband. You don't know when he's going to bring those of your own household. But you see, Pilate, on the day of crucifixion, uh, knowing uh, that he was a part of the crucifixion. You see, being crucified was worse than being hung. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. See, when a man get hung, it just snap his neck and it's all over with. Uh -huh. But to be crucified yes. signify that that man who had transgressed against the laws of the government yes. would be punished and would suffer. Amen. But Christ didn't break it at all. No, he didn't. Come on, somebody. Amen. He didn't uh, break any law according to the law of the man, but he was there as a lamb of God slain for you and for me. You didn't know it and they didn't understand, but why he was being beat and why he was being whipped and why he was being scorned and why he was being mocked on and slapped around, he did it for you and me. That was a part of the blood that was shed on Calvary. Oh, come on, somebody. The Bible teaches us that uh, Joseph of Abathias, uh, who recognized that Christ had been slain, and, and uh, Nicodemus, who was a religious ruler, he didn't understand what it meant to be born again. Yes. But he was a religious ruler. Yes, sir. See, some people can be religious and never know who God is. That's true. But you know who he is yes, sir. because you've been redeemed. Yes. Uh, Look around at somebody and say, you've been redeemed. Touch them because if you touch them and they touch you, you've been redeemed. You've been redeemed. Come on, somebody. Don't be scared. If, you, if you've been redeemed, you ought to thank God. There's a, pos a deposit was made on your life. The power of God came in your life. The anointing of God came in your life. You're not just a part of this ministry and just sitting there because you're cute. God will redeem it so be. The Bible said that while Jesus was up on the cross and he was laying there, yes. and when he gave up the gold, the Bible said he hung his head in the rocks of his shoulders. Yes, he did. And he gave up the gold to have to say, Father, I command my spirit yes, into your hands. Yes, he did. The Bible said when he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. There was those, both the women and the men, standing around looking. And when the earthquake, surely one of the centurion, one of the soldiers said, looked up into the heavens and looked at the cracking of the earth and said, surely this man was a son of the living God. Can't you see the power of redemption was placed in order that you and my, I might have eternal life? Look at somebody and say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. You see, a price was paid for you. Huh. You might not understand how I get paid for. It was long, a long time ago. I think the, the hymn said the old account was settled a long time ago. Huh? The Bible said that when Pilate recognized that it was coming towards the Sabbath day, and, 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 they didn't, and the Jews didn't want nobody on the cross on the Sabbath day, and, and they was caught between uh, crucifying Christ and having him on the cross, and, and Pilate didn't want to uh, move him because of the Jews and the Romans, and it was a conflict of interest. But here God sent Joseph of Abathia, who loaned Jesus his tomb. He, Jesus didn't need to, to stay in the tomb. He just needed to borrow it. There was a brand new tomb that no man ever led, but Joseph of Abathia and Nicodemus, who believed at one point, realized that we got to get Pilate out of this predicament. Yes. 
And the Bible said they went and they asked for the body of Christ. And the Bible said they went and all those that were there gathered around. And, and I have to say this because I preached this before. You see, in them days, they didn't have no gloves. Come on, somebody. And whenever they touched a man, if his blood was on his body, then his blood got on them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And even if the Abathias, Joseph of Abathias and Nicodemus wasn't quite sure about Christ, but the minute they touched his body, the minute they came in contact with the blood, the minute they understood the redeeming power, that this won't just any kind of man, that I got saved through the power of this man. Nicodemus began to understand what it means to be born again. He understood the power of God and the redeeming power that comes through by the word that God proclaimed. Amen. You see, it will no way they can handle the body of Christ and not get no blood on them. Come on, somebody. Sooner or later, people that are praying church, sooner or later the word going to come real. Sooner or later they can pray all they want to. But one day God going to knock them down. One day God going to straighten them out. One day they pray, one day too many. God said, I'm tired of them praying. I mean to tell you, when God knock you down, you're going to be down for the count. Are y'all with me on this? Come on, somebody. I mean, he's going to hit you harder than Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali at one time. When you go there, come on, somebody. And only God can help you get up. Look at somebody and say, only God can help you get up. You see, when they took Christ off that cross, Joseph of Abathias, and Nicodemus took him off the cross and they carried him over to the place to prepare his body for burial. I want you to understand, they began to put all kind of mirth and frank incense and a loaf on him and begin to prepare the body and wash it. And the whole while they were washing the body, Christ was washing them. Hey, y'all ain't with me right now. The whole while they were preparing the body for his death, he was preparing Wash away all my sins. Nothing. Nothing but the blood. Everybody say nothing but the blood of Jesus. I mean, spick and span ain't got nothing on the blood. Ajax ain't got nothing on the blood. Come on, Mr. Clean. He ain't as clean as he look. Are y'all with me on this? Are y'all with me on this? A. Jackson, Mr. Tide, ain't got nothing. You can use gain if you want to, but it ain't got nothing on the blood. I can see, I can see Nicodemus. And I can see Joseph of Abathias. I can see them looking at the hand. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Are y'all with me on this? My brother is preaching my sermon. When they went to touch him, he went to touch them. When they went to look on him, he began to look on them. When they began to sing songs of Zion, he began to draw them in. Ask you what's wrong with me? Just tell them that I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood. Now you can you can scratch yourself. And wonder what I'm talking about. But it's quite clear to me. When these men got Christ off the cross, 
Pilate was relieved and thought their troubles were over with. Everybody thought it was the end. But for you and me, it was the beginning. Are y'all with me on this? The blood that was paid in full before the foundation. When God looked on that day, God said, I can't look no more. I can't look and see. Joseph of Apathia dug out a brand new cave. He was a rich man. His funeral was already paid for. Come on, somebody. He was already prepared to die. But he didn't know that one day, one day, redeeming power was going to walk in his life. And though he was prepared for death, God will prepare him for life. Are y'all with me right now? God is preparing you for eternal life. All you got to do is believe in what God said. Turn around to somebody and look at him and say, ain't no use to, look at him, look at him like they owe you something. So ain't no use to you acting cute. Like you don't feel nothing. Because you sitting up here. See, sometimes we get sophisticated. We get bougie. In the church, we don't praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But when you think about what God done for you, when you thought the mess that he pulled you out of, when you was almost consumed and almost destroyed, when you could have lost out, you ought to thank God for his glory. Thank God. When you're in the will of God, 
All you got to do is submit yourself to the power of God and recognize the anointing and the Holy Ghost and let it break every yoke. Let it break every shell. Let it crack every rock. You see, the message of salvation is dynamic. Come on, somebody. It can go in any direction. And whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you need, God's got it. Look around and say, God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. Whatever, whatever yes. you need, Amen. if you put it before God, That's right. come on somebody, Amen. and it's according to his will, yes. Yes. He'll do it. He'll do it. don't you understand, yes. you're children of the most high, Amen. and God got treasures yes. beyond measures. Yes. And whatever you need, look at somebody that says, God's got it. If it's healing for your body, if it's your finances straight now, God will take you through something to let you know I'm still in charge. God will allow you to go through something that you might give up your hand and give him the praise. Well, you know the story. They cleaned him up, washed him up, yes. straightened him out, uh -huh. put him in brand new shroud and cloths, right. tied him up, Amen. and put him in Joseph of Abathia's grave. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it looked like it was all over with. Uh -huh. But Jesus said, uh -huh. I said, Jesus said, and See, see, hey, hey, I love you. And the world says peace. But Jesus says, I love that smile. Keep on smiling, son. You see, it's important that we understand. That when they put him in the grave, yes. he already told them. Uh -huh. He already told them. Yes, in three days, uh -huh. I'm going to come up out of this grave. Yes. In other words, death no longer have dominion. No. No. Sickness no longer have dominion. No. No. Affliction no longer have dominion. No. No. I want you to understand, I'm going to bring peace yes. where there's destruction. Yes. I'm going to bring love where there's hate. Yes. The Bible says that third day, early the first day of the week, yes. Mary yes. Magdalene yes. come from a little town near Gennesaret right. by the Sea of Galilee. Yes. The Bible says she was possessed yes. with seven unclean spirits. Yes. The spirits was neurotic. Mm -hmm. They had her going out of her mind. Yes. But one day, yes. When she met Jesus, oh, y'all ain't with me right now. Jesus looked into her life and called them demons to come out of her and redeem her by the blood. She was delivered by the blood. Jesus spoke and the spirits came out. And Mary of Magdalene was a faithful follower of Christ even to the grave. And when she believed mm -hmm. on that third day, Amen. she went to the tomb. Yes, she did. I said she went to the tomb. Yes, she did. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes, she did. Even though them demons were trying to drive her out of her mind, yes. her mind was made up. Yes. I believe that he's going to rise up. Yes. I want to be there to meet him when he come out of the grave. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready when he come back again. Why? Because I didn't redeem. I said I, I didn't redeem. 
Somebody say, I've been, I've been redeemed. redeemed. Lord have mercy. That third day, old Mary showed up. Yes. Minister Green, she was looking. She was looking through the hourglass of time. Come on, somebody. And she noticed. Come on, somebody. Just any man couldn't push the stone away. Come on, somebody. But one thing she noticed, man, is that the stone was rolled away. Are y'all with me? And the Bible said she got so excited. Come on, somebody. And she looked in, and all she saw was laid out was a prayer shawl and the shroud. But Jesus wasn't there. The Bible said that she got to worry, what did they do with my Lord and what did they do with my Savior? Where did they take him? And she got upset. And the Bible said in a moment's time, Jesus appeared right in the garden. And she asked the man, thinking that he was a gardener, where have you taken him? He said, Mary, Mary, go tell. That I have rose from the dead. And all Mary can say is, Rabadula, Rabadula, Master, Master. She went to hug him and said, Don't touch me. Come on, somebody. I just want you to know that I rose from the dead. I mean, this thing is getting good. I can feel the power and the anointing coming through. She said, I can feel his presence. And the Bible says, when he went to touch her, he said, I have not ascended yet. But go tell the disciples. They are rose from the dead. You might not know it, but your redemption was sealed by the promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see somebody gonna ask you. Somebody gonna ask you. What's wrong with your pastor? Minister, what? You, you, you ain't got to get in a long explanation. You ain't got to say but one word. Hey, if anybody asks you what's wrong with me, just tell them I've been redeemed. And if you run into any old friends of mine, come on, somebody, and they ask you how I'm doing, just tell them the last time I saw him, his hands was up. Because he's been redeemed. Yeah. 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 Word got around to the disciples. Yeah. Mary Magdalene told them and carried the first gospel. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. To the disciples. Amen. They all come running back yes, they did. looking for Jesus. I don't know about you, but in times like these, you got to be very sure. In times like these, you got to make sure your anchor, come on, come on somebody, hold to the solid rock. You got to be sure in times like this, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world. Keep your mind on Christ and remember you've been redeemed and you've been bought with a price.
See, some of them people on your job, they're going to give you the cold duck look. And they already know something wrong with you. Come on, somebody. But if you're like me, when I used to work, when the spirit would get on me, I'd say, excuse me for a minute. Go in the bathroom, shut the door. Hallelujah! Glory! Thank you, Jesus! Come back out and say, I'm all right right now. See, you got to get your praises going. Get your praises up before the blessings come down. When you learn to give God the praise, when you learn to give God the glory, when you learn to magnify God, when you know you've been bought with a price and you've been redeemed, you know what it means to be redeemed by the blood? That means whatever you've done or you're about to do, it's all under the blood. And when you're involved with the blood, the blood got a way of casting it out. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your heads with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls, as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.